grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. affirm our trust in God's mercy and confirm that we need forgiveness. Let us pray. Lord God, you created this world and made us in your own image. Forgive us when we turn away from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, through your Son you overcame evil and death, rescued us from slavery to sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord God, by your Spirit you restored us to fellowship with you and with one another. Breathe your love and freedom into our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and keep you in life eternal. Let us pray. O God, you give light to the blind and comfort to the sorrowing, and in your Son you have given us a high priest who can sympathise with us in our weakness. Hear the cry of your people and lead us home to our true country where with your Son and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please sit for the reading. The first reading is taken from the book of Job, chapter 42, commencing at verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, 
but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before. And they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comfort him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapuch. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived for 140 years and saw his children and his children's children, four generations, and Job died old and full of days. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 34 and you will find it in the middle of your pew sheet and the choir will lead us. The second reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, commencing at verse 21. But this one became a priest with an oath because of the one who said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. Accordingly, Jesus has also become the guarantee of a better covenant. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number 
because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Mark, chapter 10, beginning at the 46th verse. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. And they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. May I speak in the name of God, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Oh no. Should be better. Well, a nice, simple healing story, you think. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. To me, it's much more complex than that. And I have to take you back, oh, about six weeks. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I certainly have, that the gospel readings and therefore the sermons have been incredibly repetitive. Ever since Jesus announced his death and resurrection, the way that Mark has told the story has been to reiterate certain themes over and over again. Jesus announced his death and resurrection not once, but three times. And not once, but three times, the disciples either willfully or foolishly misunderstand. Jesus tells them that discipleship is about taking up their cross and following him, about being servant of all and last of all, and still the disciples compete with each other. 
They argue about who is the greatest. And if you remember last week, James and John even asked to sit at Jesus' right hand and his left. How many times does he have to tell them that discipleship is servanthood, that discipleship is about giving up their lives, that discipleship is putting the vulnerable first and themselves last. So as I have repeated myself over and over, I have wondered about the Mark and community and what it was that caused the author of Mark to write his story of Jesus' life in such a way that these were the themes that needed to be emphasised. And part of my thinking led me to realise that we have to, as we do with most Bible passages, to see them in both their historical cultural context and their literary context. And to take the historical cultural first, scholars now think that the Markan community, the people for whom this gospel was written, are living in southern Syria or northern Galilee. Mark's Gospel, we're fairly confident, was written about 70 CE. That means that two years before, Vespasian and his army have wrought destruction as they have marched through the whole of Galilee to Jerusalem to quell what is known as the Northern Revolt. The community for whom Mark is writing have witnessed, if not experienced, the persecution that has resulted from Vespasian's advance. Then in 70 CE, the whole of Jerusalem is razed to the ground. The holy city is destroyed and the temple is no more. So the community for whom Mark is writing may well be in some shock. Where is the God that they believe is going to protect them? What is the point, perhaps, of believing in Jesus as their saviour if there is no protection for this? What does it mean to follow God when the holy city has been destroyed? If that is the case, that explains why Mark has to remind them that they are followers of a crucified Saviour, that their faith is not about triumphalism but about the cross. In the 40 years since Jesus died, so too have most of the eyewitnesses to those events. No doubt the community of faith to whom Mark is writing had become complacent and comfortable. Persecution and suffering may well have come as a shock. And the Mark, the Mark who is writing this, needs to say, remember, this is what we are about. We follow a crucified Saviour and we must expect suffering ourselves. So that's the broader context in which I believe the story is being told. But there's also the way that Mark structures his gospel. And Mark, while people say he is the worst Greek and he is the most uneducated, still has written in a way that is quite extraordinary. And I may have bored you with this before, but one of the things that he does is to sandwich things. So you'll have a phrase or a story at the beginning and the end of a section. And in this case, at 8.22, Jesus heals a blind man. Now, our lectionary has chosen to leave that out because two healings, well, what have you got to say about two healings? But it's incredibly important if we want to understand Mark. In 8.22, Jesus takes the blind man out of the city, puts saliva on his eyes and says, can you see? 
And the man says, I see people, but they look like trees walking. And Jesus has to have a second attempt before the man can see clearly. In today's reading, it only takes one attempt. And what scholars think is that Mark has cleverly set up this section to focus on the ignorance and the misunderstanding of the disciples and Jesus' gradual revelation of what is going to happen to him. This is all about the disciples and discipleship. When this section begins, their seeing is only partial and when it ends... It is absolutely clear. Now that's all very well and good. Hopefully you now understand a bit more about Mark's Gospel. But what does that have to say to us here in our context? So far removed from the geography, the history and the culture of that time. Well, I have thought and thought about what Mark might say if he was writing to this community. And I have to say I've failed because I don't think Mark would be telling us that we follow a crucified saviour because I think we know that. And I don't see in our community the sort of competition that seems to be arising in Mark's gospel. And I don't see the fear and anxiety that other people have experienced, for example, during this pandemic. So I was a bit stuck. I'm afraid I can't stand up here and pretend to be Mark and chide you for misbehaviour. But what I think this gospel does say to us or does challenge us about is what are our blind spots? In what way have you and I become complacent and comfortable? In what way have we willfully or foolishly failed to read the scriptures and to find their true meanings? And perhaps more particularly on this day, on this wonderful day when we welcome Margot into our community. What are the stories that we will share with Margot? And will we share them authentically in such a way that her life is changed and impacted by her knowledge of a saviour that loved her enough that he gave her life that she might live? Children who are who would like to come up close so you can see what's happening, you're very welcome to come and sit on the step here so you can watch what's happening.
Upset? Good. We welcome Margot Ann, who has come to be baptised. I invite her sponsors to present her now. We present Margot Ann, who has come to be baptised. Will you accept the responsibilities placed upon you in bringing Margot Ann for baptism? I will. Are you willing to answer on behalf of Margot Ann? By your own prayers and example, by your friendship and love, will you encourage Margot Anne in the life and faith of the Christian community? I will, with God's help. Before God and this congregation, you must affirm that you turn to Christ and reject all that is evil. So I ask you, do you turn to Christ? I turn to do you repent of your sins? I repent of my sins. Do you reject selfish living and all that is false and unjust? I reject them all. Do you renounce Satan and all evil? I renounce all that is evil. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you in the light of Christ to his everlasting kingdom. Will you each, by God's grace, strive to live your whole life as a disciple of Christ, loving God with all your heart and your neighbour as yourself? I will, with God's help. You have heard these, our sisters and brothers, respond to Christ. Will you support them in this calling? Well. Let us pray. Grant, merciful God, that Margot Ann will be so buried with Christ in baptism that the new nature may, may be raised up in her. May the fruit of your spirit grow and flourish in her. Amen. Amen. Give to Margot Ann's sponsors and their families the desire to share with her what you have revealed in your holy gospel. Amen. Amen. May they know Christ forgiving love and continue in fellowship and service of his church. May they proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. Amen. Amen. We thank you for the ministry we have in your world and, in, and to each other in the household of faith. Hasten that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks that at the beginning of creation your Holy Spirit moved upon the waters to bring forth light and life. With water you cleanse and replenish the earth, you nourish and sustain all living things. We give you thanks that through the waters of the Red Sea you led your people out of slavery into freedom and brought them through the River Jordan to new life in the land of promise. Thanks be to God. We give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, for his baptism by John, for his anointing with the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. We give you thanks that through the deep waters of death Jesus delivered us from our sins and was raised to new life in triumph. Thanks. Thanks be to God. We give you thanks for the grace of the Holy Spirit who forms us in the likeness of Christ and leads us to proclaim your kingdom. Thanks be to God. And now we give you thanks that you have called Margot Anne to new birth in your church through the waters of baptism. Pour out your Holy Spirit in blessing and sanctify this water so that she who is to be baptised in it may be made one with Christ in his death and resurrection. May she die to sin, rise to newness of life and continue forever in Jesus Christ our Lord through whom we give you praise and honour in the unity of the Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
I invite you all now to stand and to join with Margot Ann's sponsors in affirming as yours the faith of the church. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's fine. Can you just bounce? Margo Ann, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Margo Ann, I sign you with the sign... No, around this way, darling. I s I'll get you in a minute. I sign you with the sign of the cross to show that you are marked as Christ's own forever. Live as a disciple of Christ, fight the good fight, finish the race, keep the faith. Confess Christ crucified, Proclaim his resurrection, look for his coming in glory. <laughs> look at him looking at me. Look, look. Don't look at me, look at the candle. <laughs> look. Oh, pretty. Margot Ann, God has called you into his God has brought you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Margot, God has called you into his church. We therefore receive and welcome you as a member with us of the body of Christ, as a child of the one heavenly Father and as an inheritor of the kingdom of God. Let go. Let go. <laughs> in baptism, God has made us one in Christ. His Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Okay, kids, you can go back to your seats now. And I wasn't paying attention. The hymns, in fact, are in the hymn booklet and we sing the baptismal hymn, In Water We Grow. Thank you. 
secure in the womb and speechlessly know love, safety, and room, baptizing and blessing we publish for good, the freeing, caressing, safekeeping of God. In water we wash the dirt of each day, Trouble and rush are carried away in Christ recreated by love's cleansing art. Self will and self hatred breath, then surface alive, rebounding from death. Our old self goes under in Christ dead and drowned. We rise washed in wonder by love clad and crowned. In water well, for by its deep flow, through bloodstream and cell, we live, think, and grow. Praise God, love outflowing, whose well of new birth baptizes a knowing and waters the The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour, Jesus Christ who by the power of your spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. In baptism you have united us to him and brought us out of darkness into light. You pour your spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, and calling us to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing... Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, 
this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer, of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Will you please stand as we pray? Gracious God, in baptism you have made us one family in Christ your Son, one in the sharing of his body and blood, one in the communion of his spirit. Help us to grow in love for one another and come to the full maturity of the body of Christ. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Now ask uh, Manfred and Chris to come forward. I think um, Manfred and Chris have made such an impact on this parish in the short time that they've been with us that I don't really need to uh, recount what they have done and shared with us. But the bad news for all the COVID wardens is that now you have to clean the toilets before and after the service <laughs> because Manfred won't be doing it for you. And we will lose one of our choristers. From the moment um, Manfred and Chris arrived, they have fully engaged in the life of this parish, in jumble, in worship, um, and we are extremely grateful. And um, while we wish you well in your journey and the next part of your lives, we are going to miss you terribly. Thank you. Because of COVID, I'm not going to invite you to lay your hands on, on uh, Chris and Manfred, but you might like to figuratively do so. Let's pray. Living, loving God, we thank you for Chris and Manfred and for bringing them to us. We give you thanks for the wonderful things that they have shared of the people that they are. And we pray for your blessing on them now as they begin this new part of their journey together. And so, Manfred and Chris, in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may you be blessed in all that you do. Amen. And our final hymn, Amazing Grace. Bye.
into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Give honour to all. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. everyone. So we can have that photo. Could I ask you to come forward towards the front the altar and we're going to turn around and look up 
at the choir stands. Is that cool?